Welcome to the New Overlords podcast, where we talk about video games, news, and what's fun. I'm Max, and with me is someone, although they weren't at PAX, they pack the fun into every episode of this podcast. It's my co-host, Seema. <laughs> I'm a packer. <laughs> Hello there, I'm Seema. I'm a fun packer. I like that. I'm going to go by that, fun packer. Hi, Max. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have Jackie and Corley both here, and I'm glad you're back from PAX, and I can't wait to hear about everything, so I will yeah. shut up now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I, I went to PAX, and both Jackie and Corley were there, so yes. I figured it would be awesome to pull them into the show. Jackie... Hello, good to good Hello. to have you here. Nice to see you hey. again. Uh, let's see, it's for the invite. It's been like forty eight hours since we hung, hung out last. I'm so tired. And, and to be clear, I'm although so we know tired. you from from other things <laughs> as well, you were just there having fun. Yeah. Um. So that's what we're going to talk about. Although you were on a panel again, just having fun mm -hmm. as as a person, like you are. <laughs> so we'll definitely talk about that too. Good old human being. Yes. And also with us is someone who first got me into going to PAXs a few years ago and was back uh, not on vacation, well, semi, semi vacation, but back to helping out around the show a little bit, um, Corley. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you on. can blame me for all the PAX talk. <laughs> yeah. I like yeah. it. The, the, the PAX, no, no PAX video from me this year. Uh, uh, but uh, Mike Strollart, who does the Below the Stone game, and we interviewed Mike. He actually did a, a show floor video uh, of his own. Uh, I'll have to link it. I'll put it in the show notes. Oh, sweet. It's in oh, our nice. Discord. Um, it, it's a good one. Um, but yes, so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about all about PAX, including Corley and I got to do a secret, uh, not well, it wasn't that secret, but a closed behind the scenes dev talk uh, with the dune awakening team from funcom uh so and the news from that just came out of embargo a few hours ago so we'll just we'll touch on that by the end of the show a little bit for probably about five minutes uh but we will also right now talk about the news good news everyone first up in the news very dear to my and corley's uh hearts i think we're the two that play the most of this, I think, in our guild, in our gaming community. But I've seen other people picking it up, too. Yeah, we're going to get more people to play. Sean Murray posted uh, a single emoji about two days ago. Again, this is, this is their communication plan. This is their roadmap. <laughs> he puts out a single emoji. And, then in, and I, was, I was telling this story at PAX uh, to, to the table there of why I like this communication plan. You, you have to get yourself into a, a unique position to be able to pull this off. But he puts out a single emoji and then anywhere between like two days and two weeks after that, an update comes out and nobody knows what's going to be in it. Could be anything. Usually the emoji is a hint, but. <laughs> right. And the emoji inspires speculation. And then, the, yeah, then there's speculation and, you know, and people you know, there's there's channels in the discord where people are are breaking it down and <laughs> but no one's ever disappointed because they don't over promise anything uh, like like they did at launch and like they're doing with light no fire <laughs> but he's doing a good job with this so yeah fun update came out custom ships if so if you're into no man's sky you can now build a custom ship you go out and break down other ships that you find just the regular normal ships break them down save their parts go to this special platform and reassemble them into a custom ship, cu custom paint jobs, um, everything that you might want. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what we can build because he talks about you have to go out and you can salvage ships for the parts. So does that mean we can, you know, yeah, put that's like, like the Sentinel hull on like I don't think so. You know, a sailor, a, a solar sailor. I don't know. It'd be nice. I opened up the interface and it seemed like the complete collection of possible parts shows up in the interface and if you have one of them then you can use it but it seemed to be like the, the complete set and it was just all the base ships and like so sort of all their parts of so it's like ships. how in arc you can only mate certain dinosaurs <laughs> animal uh, husbandry no i was gonna say spaceship husbandry uh, you know well yeah not like mating ships. <laughs> there are living <laughs> ships in the game. They're combining they, ships. They, they could yes. institute that. You get an yeah. egg and you hatch your ship. Yep. So that is a thing. 
And there are pets that you hatch as well, and you mutate their DNA. Anyway, they also did a redesign, and they keep doing this stuff. So they like redesigned the intro and launch screen. They redesigned how all the stations look from the outside and the inside, and now the inside of every space station, you know, there's one station in each system. They're all procedurally generated, so like the stuff can show up in different places and different color schemes. So, yeah, I, they they I, look pretty cool. I mean, I, like I said, I'm I'm here instead of playing that. So, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so yeah, that's a that, that's a good one. Um, also, I am not playing this yet, but I'm getting closer and closer to to wanting to play this. Anybody playing Dragon's Dogma two yet? Corley, have you looked not at this? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, Jackie? I haven't because I don't know if it's the kind of game I want to play. Max, I've been at PAX. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we, I, have, we I haven't had time it. to do anything. Yeah, yet. right. I I didn't play. I par- I barely played anything at at PAX. It, besides, like a couple demos on the on the show floor. I always bring like my laptop and my Steam Deck, and I've got it all loaded up with extra games, mm-hmm. uh, and then I don't play them at all. Um, but yeah, Dragon's Dogma. It's gotten some heat because they had uh, a little bit of performance uh, issues, and the performance issues are like. The frame rate isn't as stable as it could be. It's not like it's crashing or, but it's it's people, people on the internet, gamers, (laughs) nobody hates games more than gamers. Gamers have real problems with FPS. And if your FPS isn't like 60 frames per second in, in just like perfect, you know, capped at 60 frames, perfectly 60 frames of it, if it drops or it's variable or it's 30 frames a second, Yes, if you're very sensitive to frames per second, it might give you a little bit of a weird experience. Um, but anyway, they got downvoted for that, and it got downvoted on Steam for microtransactions. So, so it's funny that you're talking but, about frame rates and how people get upset about that, because there was an article I saw today on PC Gamer that said it was the, the title was, it used to be all about frame rates, but the Steam Deck has cured me of that. Right, right. So yeah. and this and yeah. the switch. It's yep. like it's like and, and and like playing on my phone where like half of the gamers in the world play play their games. Nobody yeah. cares about frame rights. Yeah. Um anyway, the people that are actually playing Dragon's Dogma are basically saying it's awesome and it's really cool. Um yeah, but I don't know if it's the kind of game for me either. So we'll see. Um if I'm if I'm gonna get to it. Because it's a lot of it doesn't respect your time, but that's kind of the design. You just want to like wander around and maybe you'll, you know, get derailed and have to like fight a big ogre and then go back to town and the thing you wanted to get done doesn't get done. But that's like the fun of it. But I don't know if I don't know if I'm up for <laughs> not not getting to do what I want to do. Um a game which I still haven't finished, Phantom Liberty. Uh Cyberpunk 2077. The only quick note on this is this weekend, so by the time you hear this, it could already even be passed. Uh, this weekend, Cyberpunk 2077 is having a free trial, five hours of the base game at no extra cost on the consoles only. So this is Xbox and PS5, uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Get it this weekend. Try it out if you would like to. It is amazing. I mean, this is an amazing game. So if you've not tried it yet, just I mean, even just try it for those five hours if you want. A really advanced. If you like the cyberpunk aesthetic, definitely try it. And if you just want to try out a modern RPG, um, it's it's one of my favorite. Uh, here's a f- interesting story. I so I've been following this, and uh, Elon Musk gets a lot of uh, uh, hate also for <laughs> a lot of reasons. Some valid, some some not. Uh, Neuralink is a research project that's been going on, which does a lot of work to basically scan your brain real time and provide some brain to computer interface based on that. And one of their early tests, uh, they took a guy who's a quadriplegic, paralyzed from the shoulders down, basically, uh, and wired him up with Neuralink. Um, he, you know, he was up for it. He asked to to get it all done and and it's been amazing, apparently. And the guy is like having the time of his life. And he's so apparently he stayed the first night he got it. He stayed up all night playing Civilization. Um, so I just thought this was super cool. Um, just the, the the kind of thing that when when somebody like that gets an opportunity to, you know, I I can only imagine if I couldn't play games anymore. <laughs> 
yeah. there he is. Um, I would not be. I would be unhappy. <laughs> I would want. I would want dia or, uh, nodes implanted in my brain as quickly as possible. Yeah. Right. Um, for for me to be able to play this kind of stuff. So that's super cool. And there he is. Um, and he's yeah. smiling and happy, and because he's playing video games. <laughs> that's uh, cool. Last one in the news. Have you guys seen this? The uh, Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra teaser trailer for a game that's coming out next year. Did this, did it just come I out today? I haven't seen it. Um, it came out over the weekend, I think. Again, while we were at PAX. Uh, yeah, what? Oh, yeah. Come on, you guys. I definitely didn't see it. <laughs> Go watch it. Go watch it. This is all in-game in-game rendered so it's not like a pre-render cinematic this is all in-game in-engine stuff from unreal 5 and it is it's like a movie quality trailer so like this part right here when he's talking isn't as good as his face uh, as the the future part as as more even further in the trailer so just keep watching it i got to the end of it and i just wanted to like keep watching i wanted this to be a whole movie and i i would have watched the whole thing as a as a whole movie for not for two hours yeah. or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, super good, super high quality. All of the meta human face stuff when they're talking like this, look at, look at, look at him. So it's, yeah. it's Captain America and black Panther rise of Hydra. So it's back, you know, they, they, they get to punch Nazis. Good, uh, good villains to, to have in a game these days. Um, but they don't know each other and they're kind of button heads a little bit. So I, it's going to be a little bit of like, you know they're gonna like get it at the at the end of the trailer. They're like squaring off to like fight each other. Get you're in my way. No, you're in my way. I don't have time for this. All right, let's let's go at it. Um, but you know they're gonna like fight each other and then team go. Up. Yeah, not team up. Mar Martha, why why did you say Martha? <laughs> Are we friends now? We're friends. And then they'll both team up to to go fight Nazis. I'm sure. But still, amazing, super cool. Exciting stuff. Unreal Five is really exciting to me. That's so that's why I threw this one in. Does anybody else care about Unreal Five? <laughs> or is, I mean, or is, no, well, I, I have mean, idle curiosity. Like I, when I see something like this, I do think, I wonder if this is Unreal Five. Yeah. And what it what is this going to do for more games over the next few years and moving forward? What is what does this allow game developers to be able to do? Uh, it it makes it makes new projects. It gives more tools to developers to do more, to do more, uh, do more, to, more. To do more, do better, do more, do it faster than they've ever been able to before. So yeah, I'm, I'm always very excited to see anything to do with unreal five. All right. Well, that was it. Anything else you guys heard in the news that, that we should mention? I think that is a, a pretty good rundown because then we got our PAX news. Yeah, let's so, go. <laughs> as always, thanks to everybody out there for following and listening. If you need any of the subscribe links or audio or video for us, they were all on newoverlords.com. Special thanks already tonight. We got a relatively big group there in the chat room. Everyone who hangs out with us live in Twitch or in Discord, uh, definitely hit us up there in Discord where we talk about fun stuff pretty much all day, every day, uh, even while we're at PAX. And also, don't forget, if you're looking for a big family-friendly gaming community, check out Alea Yacht Est. That's the guild that we play in. And all of our MMOs, all the big MMOs are represented there, which is really fun. AIE-guild.org for the AIE Discord. And now, and now... It looks like meat's back on our menu, boys. No way. Oh, God. Yeah. Fine. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Meat on our menu this week, Pax. It was fun. I guess let's start by just going around and giving our general impressions to start. Um, uh, so Jackie, what what did you what did you think of it overall? Um, it was really good to be back to a, a show like that. I think the last one that I attended was, whoo, I want to say Pax South in January 2020 but even then that was kind of like a day trip from Austin to, to San Antonio so it wasn't like we could experience the entire weekend um, 
But yeah, I've, t- I've told everyone that I ran into throughout the weekend where, um, for, for those who may not know what the, the convention center, how it's, how it's structured is, um, you can get your badge and then you um, walk towards the expo floor, but um, you go down into the floor um, level. And so you have the opportunity to just see the entirety of, of the expo floor. And when I, when I saw that for the first time Thursday, what morning, Thursday afternoon, I was like, oh man, this this cured my depression for like at least six days. This is, <laughs> I was, I was so happy to, to see that I started tearing up quite a bit. Um, and it was, it's always, it's always about the people. I was, I was there to speak on a panel, of course. Um, but I, I wanted to meet as many people who I hadn't seen in years is, is the other thing or meeting for the first time, because that's how a lot of my connections are is like, I, I meet them, I network with them online. And then, the only opportunity we have to meet people is 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 at shows like these. So, it was just very very wholesome. It was it was very much a hi. You want to say hi? She's she just came in and she's like wagging her tail and she's all like excited. And oh everything. parfait! <laughs> Parfait's here. Hold on a second. Parfait, the the tripod here. dog. We caught a bunny today. I was caught? so upset. Oh. Yeah. Somehow she oh. caught a bunny. All right, we're gonna make we're gonna make Jackie large. Yeah, so oh, <laughs> look, look, looking up in the air. Dogs can't look up. Oh you? my god! Hi, sweetheart. Oh, cute dog. Hi. You okay? <laughs> Every time I pick her up during a, a meeting in a like in a call, she looks like this. And I was like. <laughs> It's like she doesn't look happy. I'm like she's just disassociating. She's just, she's like she's like she's freezing in, up, looking at the she's ceiling. In, she's, right, she's adoring. No, she's actually loving it. You see, your eyes have closed, her yeah. little tongue coming out. She's, she's like, hold okay. me some more. She's like, look I at know. me. This is happening. Yay! So the so this is parfait. Hello. Okay. 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 Hold on. Don't don't take the headphones with you. Okay. Okay, so yeah, so that was that was my my first initial impressions. Just wholesome, goodness, and uh, I was just extremely happy. Uh, the the post post con blues are certainly hitting me for sure. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about your yeah. panel in just a second because I definitely want to get to that. Yeah. But Corley, what what about you? So you were an enforcer this year yep. again, which you've which you've done in the past. Um, yeah, so I mean it's. It's always, every time we go to PAX, I mean, the, the people, like, you bump into somebody by accident, and they're like, and, and immediately everybody's like, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, you know, you, you don't get, like, if, you know, out in town, and it's just, it's nice, because you hardly ever have any issues with people there, people are always nice, all the, the you know, the vendors and everybody, they just, they're like, they want to talk about their stuff. And they could talk about it for hours, and yeah. cause they're there to, <laughs> you know, because they they're there because they love it, you know. And yeah, you know, we we so where I work, I work in the PC area. I mean, we set up those computers, we set up like three hundred computers, and, and I mean, they were packed this year, um, even during the show. Um, and we had VR back again, which we haven't had. They haven't had for a couple. Of years. I think they had it last year. For a couple of years, we didn't have it, and to avoid having a big long line for that, they had you know reservations, and there were people make. They would so we're we were right next to where the lineup was for it, and they're like, "Where do I do VR?" So we were constantly telling people, "Yeah, it's right right behind you, just right there." So you know, in tournaments, they had all kinds of tournaments. So it's it's just it's nice because, it, you know, people are there. They know they can have fun and. They don't have to worry about being judged or, you know, all that stupid garbage that happens on the internet and people, they can be who they want to be, you know, and, and that's what's good, I think, is good about PAX. I yeah. Mean, it's great, you know, and the tabletop section, after the expo f- closes at six, the tabletop section, there, you can't, you can barely find a table to sit at back there to play a game, that, which you can that, check out for free, so. Right, that seemed so much better busier this year for whatever reason so yeah it's it's gotten bigger every year all of those tables i so those people playing those 
tabletop games are they playing in groups of friends or are they just sitting down with like so they have so they actually have um the Yes, yeah, some of them are playing with friends. Like, hey, let's go get a game. So, like, my son, Saturday night, he was like, hey, they got done doing one of the tournaments in the, the Bring Your Own Computer area where, I, where I'm working and where we have, you know, our stuff. And they're like, hey, let's go play a game. It's like, all right. So we went over there, and he's like, I've always wanted to play Settlers of Catan. So we checked that out of the library, and we started, you know, figuring out how to play it. Because none of us had played it before. But they have certain tables set aside for learning games like they have a th a, a, a schedule posted that says these tables were teaching these games at these times and then they have these big cones and i don't know if you can see any, any of the pictures but they have these big cones one says lfg looking for groups so they're looking for other people to play this game and then they have another one that's lft which is looking for teacher for you know, they get a game and they put the thing up and somebody can walk by and say, hey, I know how to play that game. I'll teach you how to play it. And they just start playing. So a lot of this, what you're showing here, um, or what's on the, the stream right now, some of it is card tournaments, like magic tournaments. Um, they had the new <laughs> Star Wars TCG there, Star Wars Unlimited, which yeah, I, I hate to say it, shame on me, but I didn't even look at it. No, no time. I, well, I didn't have time, and I don't need another money sink. Right. So, <laughs> I don't need another um, now, if they had <clears throat> now, if they had loot cards for stuff in Star Wars: The Old Republic, I would probably buy some of those cards. Right. Right. You that's, know, like the old yeah. WoW ones. But yeah. Yeah. Right. But that's how they'd get it's, us. Yeah. The the tabletop area. I considered working at it this year and oh, uh, previous years because it would be interesting to see it. You know, because that's something i've always wanted to do more but i just never have until and this is the first packs that i actually played a tabletop game in tabletop because my son he's him and his fiance um have really they're really into the board games and stuff now so that's there's 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 my long. video of of Corley coming out of the <laughs> cyo um, bring your own pc yeah um, byoc area yeah which is super cool. I probably was like, "Why are you filming?" Yeah, I thought you were gonna take it easy this trip, Max. That you were gonna, you weren't gonna be a media media. Well, I've all, I've got 15 minutes of video show. here total, so yeah. I I did not do, you know, I'd like <laughs> a little a couple shots of, of Corley, a couple shots of the floor, mm. um, like like yeah. Uh, I've got this. <laughs> I only have a couple photos. I didn't have my big camera with me to take video. So, in addition to what? all the stuff on the show floor, which we'll talk more about in, in just a second, because um, I've got a rundown of like my highlights and, and what I saw, um, there's also all the panels. And I usually don't go to very many of the panels for whatever reason. Yoshi P was there for Final Fantasy in a panel, got like live at PAX talking to people. That was a fun one. That was a good one. That was fun. Um, sure. This one I went to, and, <laughs> and food and games, I thought, eh, that'll be that'll be interesting. You guys did awesome. It was a great panel. It was. Oh, it, it, was, it, was it was good. So I, I, it was, it was just entertaining and fun to just be there. It's not like I was going there to like this is information I need. I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna like take this away and do do something with it. It was, it, it was just like fun to sit there. And, I and just hear can't wait talk. to hear more about it. So I wish they recorded them. So tell us how you got, yeah. how, how you got pulled in, and who these four people are because they're really cool, amazing people too. Uh, so I, I was already friends with, uh, Andy Lunique. Um, uh, he's gosh, just to the left like of you, he, right? He's the, he's a, he's one of the two chefs. He's well to, to, to my right stage left, I guess. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's Andy. He's absolutely lovely. I, I have nothing but love and adoration and respect for him. Uh, he, this is the second time that I've spoken on a panel with him. And uh, yeah, I, I said, hey, I, I was thinking about going to PAX. And then he's like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this panel. <laughs> would you <laughs> would you be interested in, in speaking on it? And I was like, absolutely. Because he is also a chef. Um, not only is he um, in, in games, but he, he is also a chef. So we often, you know, lift each other up whenever we see each other, like make food and, and post pictures of the food that we create and 
And so it was just, it was, it was very, very lovely um, working with him on this. Um, and fun fact, uh, this is the first time that I've met Noah and Brennan. <laughs> so it was, it was funny after the panel, um, someone was like, so how long did it take for y'all to, you know, put this together? And I was like, well, we met earlier this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then we, we were, we had a call about a week ago to kind of like really hone down on, um, the, the topics of discussion. Cause Andy, Andy did all the heavy lifting really. Uh, he put together the agenda and he gave us free reign. So he's like, I, I think, um, knowing what I know of, of you, I think you would feel comfortable speaking about this. And we were free to, to, to tweak and adjust as needed. Um, and, and so that's kind of how that came about. Um, and it was his idea to, uh, do the award ceremony afterwards. We, at, towards the end of the panel, we, we were giving like a little chef Andy in game menu awards, uh, to, to devs because we knew that they were going to be present to, to some degree, uh, during the, the weekend. And even though, um, Larian was present for their award but um, yeah. everyone else we, we kind of just like <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure Andy just went to their booths uh, or tried to find them and and just presented to them just, uh, so just grabbed somebody well somebody came in and and got it there in the session right um, oh yeah that was Ben that was Ben he's such he's such a lovely oh. human being I I absolutely love him so that was Ben I uh he does a lot of the Larian Studios uh social media uh, but I didn't realize I got sweet, a picture babe. of this so, of, of what? Uh, so this is so what 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 what's his what's his name the lawyer um, who kicked it off? Oh Noah, Noah, yeah. So Noah, Noah. So each of the panelists d sort of did like their their part. So they're all you know you you all four of you are, are amazing and and able to like talk and and funny and engaging. So you each sort of gave your perspective. Noah kicked it off and did a little bit of like history of food in games. Mm -hmm. um, and he went back and back and back, and he brought up this one, which is in like the late 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 fifties, early sixties. Um, but it's a mouse maze. Mouse goes and gets cheese in the mouse maze game, um, which so Lucy was just talking about that in the in the Twitch chat. Um, that was that that resonated with me because Sima deconstructed that into the perfect version of mouse eats cheese, and I made that as my Unreal. Uh, game engine experiment <laughs> last year. <laughs> Ozzy's oh, cheese. I did get a picture of it. That's cool. Um, yeah, but yeah, he was asking like, what what was the first game ever that incorporated food? Yeah, most of us said Pac Man. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. And that's, right. That's we right. were all wrong. <laughs> I was like, oh man, we're like kind of dating ourselves here, but Pac Man. Uh, so it was it was pretty funny. And yeah, he was talking about the the history of food in in games. I cover representation of food in games um andy himself covered mechanics and systems and how food is used um in in those ways and uh brendan was going over how to apply your love of food to the world of games and yeah it was just it was it was so fun like it the, the vibes were immaculate the chemistry was great the energy in the room was fantastic i was yeah oh I was so nervous. I got a <laughs> Nils can attest to this because uh, our our panel was at four thirty, and bless my, my 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 friends who wanted to support. They they started lining up an hour before, <laughs> and yeah. I was like, oh my goodness, that's so early. And so I got there around what three forty five, or so. We were hanging out. There's a few people in line sitting on benches and whatnot. And four o'clock comes around. There's a few more people that are in line. And then 410, 415, and I just see this line, <laughs> this line of people. I'm like, what is this? What is happening? Yeah. yeah. And um, so the the enforcer who is who is running the room, thank you, Joe. I love you. Um, he, he was like, you guys can go in and, and get set up with tech and everything. And so I asked him, I was like, hey, so what's what's your what's your headcount on your clicker? And he's like, 265. I'm like, oh, that's a good crowd. That's a solid crowd. And then we finally um, were setting up, and I do this before our dev streams too. But I run around in a circle to <laughs> to get the uh, to get the nerves out and everything because like I'm no stranger to being in front of a camera or speaking publicly or anything. But you still got the nerves, and so I'm like running around. And one of the tech guys is like, 
are you okay? <laughs> and I'm just like, this is fun, man. I'm just like getting my nerves out. And then he keeps looking at me. And then I was like, do no other panelists do this? <laughs> and he just looks at me. He's like, no. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty fun. And then uh, we were all seated and just watching the room fill and fill and fill. And I just look over at Andy. I'm like, Andy, man, we're, we're going to have a full room. What the heck? And I was panicking even more. <laughs> But it was it was so lovely because um, I'm, I'm used to dev streams and regular streams in general. So I see numbers all the time. But to see like actual faces and when you're speaking and you see people either nodding or, you know, clapping or cheering. Like I said, yeah, with, you know, Sortor, I'm Star Wars World Republic and people were cheering. I was like, what? Really? Oh. Like, where yeah. are you? Hold on. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it was it was very very heartwarming to to see that and um, and to feel that energy in the room. And that was a that was a fun thing to do. And I I don't know if it was it was by design, but the way it worked out, each of you had games that you were referencing, and Noah mm -hmm. kicked it off by like having like doing a shout out to the crowd. Hey, anybody remember blah? Like anybody remember Pac Man? Well, everybody knows what Pac Man is, but but it gets the crowd engaged. So then throughout the whole session, every all the whole crowd was like, you know, you'd say a game and people be like, oh, yeah, I've, I've you know, woo. So it, that, <laughs> woo. <laughs> no, th that was just a really good technique to to have the crowd engaged. And then everybody was listening to each of your stories. You had the great story about Caitlin's personal experience going into oh, yeah. one of the date night. And we don't, we don't want to spoil it too much, but one of the date night scenes in Star Wars The Old Republic. Um, and there's food mm -hmm. involved and how like that's a, a, you know, a part of this whole story of how food can be, be used to tell a story. And um, that, yeah, it was, just worked out yeah, great. It, it was one of the more entertaining and engaging panels that I've been to. And I, I don't go to many, but that was it was it was fun. It was it was interesting. Yeah. yeah. Starting off with Noah was definitely the right move. <laughs> Yeah, because he's, uh, he's, he's, he's very engaging. He's very charismatic. Um, he he knows how to like you know uh, interact with the crowd, as well. Even though we're not doing stand up comedy or anything, but it it was you know it was very good good opener. Um, you know, I've, I, I, I they are trained to do this to some degree, depending on their depending on their training. But I found a lot of lawyers more. are are good <laughs> in front of a camera. You know, they have no fear. They'll talk in front of a crowd. They'll engage because if they're courtroom trained in particular um, uh, or or even other disciplines where they're like talking to a board or they're talking to, a, you know, an HR team at an organization, they're, they're good. Plus, they're smart people, typically. Well, um, he was also saying that he used to be an actor. Uh, and then me and I think Brennan, I can't remember, but me and Brennan, we were looking. I was like, did you also used to do word woodworking too? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, actually. And I'm like, dude, stop. Yeah. <laughs> just, just stop right now. Is there anything you haven't done? Yeah. You know, so it was, it was one of those moments. But um, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was great. And, you know, we, we do, we did compare notes. Um, we did have like an outline of what we were going to say and we were like looking at each other because we knew that there was going to be crossover to some degree, but we didn't want to like rehash anything that someone was going to be speaking about or for. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, it was just, it was just a, a very, very solid group. Um, I was, we were told that it was recorded, but I oh, cool. don't have any follow up after that. I'm I'm not entirely sure if it's going to be thrown on the PAX channel or or anything like that. But hopefully, hopefully. Um, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. I know they they stream the main theater and they stream Albatross Theater. Those are their big theaters. But yeah, I don't. Know, I I can try to ask. Yeah, that'd be I great. I can't promise it. We could we get our hands on that. Um, uh, oh, I we got a. You disappeared. Oh yeah, you did disappear. <laughs> You're just you're just a black mass now. I will look at that. A black um, rectangle. While, while we're talking, yeah. Somebody else. Yeah. So, you guys describe. Do you guys know anything about this? Well, did, talk about the uh, here. Talk about the food trucks. <laughs> you talk about the food trucks I for like a second. The food trucks. Yeah. Talk I about got that. I got mac and cheese from one of them, but oh my gosh! So y'all see like 
how I am. Oh, wait, what the heck is that? You got a photo of <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. Look at me getting a mac and cheese. And it's so funny because like you all know what my personality is. Like I'm very um uh a bubbly, I guess is is a, an appropriate term. And and when I this is my second time in Boston. I am not used to Boston culture. <laughs> And it was really windy that day too. So like you, you could barely see or hear anything, but I was like, I'm gonna get my mac and cheese. And I'm looking up at this, this, this man who's like, you know, serving like all the food. And he says something to me and I'm like, huh, what? And he's like, what do you want to eat? And I'm like, oh, classic mac and cheese, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Like he wasn't being mean or he like, it was just like, it was just a very just matter being. of fact question. And he's like, what do you want to eat? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. It was the wind, I promise. Um, but no, that, that that was really, really nice. That was, that was good. That was solid. And we had garlic noodles at some point. I, um, oh man, I don't know if y'all in chat and whoever's going to be watching this, if you've, if you've done a show, especially a four day show, you forget to do all of the basic needs that you're <laughs> <laughs> like, you forget to drink water. You forget, like you can't sleep. You're jet lagged. And, and on top of that, it was really cold too. So One sec, almost back. That's Every fine. Time. I'm stalling. I'm stalling for you. <laughs> <laughs> the guys at the chicken and biscuits truck were the most fun. They were joking around and vibing. See, that's my jam. See, I, yeah, I missed the chicken a bit. I should have went to the chicken biscuits one, but I went. I, I did go out there. I went out there one day, and I mean, it's decent food, but mm -hmm. yeah, the lot. Some of the lines were kind of long, and I was like, eh, I don't need to wait because it was kind of chilly too. So yeah, at some point, not healthy at all. But I did have two lobster rolls. <laughs> Well, you're, yeah, you're in New I England. You gotta have those. So. Yeah. I told myself, I'm like, if I'm in Boston, I gotta have the lobster roll. My God. But I was so tired. I was so tired. I couldn't all right. finish all of my meals because my body was just like, girl, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you need to sleep like right now. But I was right. running on serotonin and dopamine. <laughs> my camera you're back. Hello. died because of PAX. So I had it out there packs and i didn't charge this battery it slowly discharges during while we're uh i think i need to get a higher voltage usb-c cable plugged into it that's probably the, the trick yeah. anyway yeah i like the food trucks i don't know what you guys talked about it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> i did go to the barking crab which is a old school crab shack uh down on the Ooh. waterfront um and i was gonna get they had three kinds of lobster rolls um but i asked the uh I asked the, the the guy there. I'm like, what's what's good? Because you know, you go to a seafood place, you want to ask what's good. What's, what do they got in? And he said, no, mm -hmm. get the fish sandwich. Um, it's really good right now, um, and it was great. So um, it was but, fresh. Yeah, it was it was fresh. It was good. Um, yeah, so that was that's nice. Recommended. All right, let's talk about uh, the other stuff on the show floor. So I I glossed over this. We don't really need to get into, it, but this is the only sort of like more controversial. Well, it, but it wasn't. So before the show, this was in theory really controversial, and people were mad that it was there. There, yeah, game, yeah, yeah. Kidia, Quidia, Quidia, yeah. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> At the show, it was just a dud. I mean, it was cool looking, but there was like nothing there, and they didn't. You know, the people they had there like barely even knew what it was. And couldn't explain mm -hmm. it, and what it is. It was controversial because it's Saudi Arabia. It's the government of Saudi Arabia basically is investing in and sponsoring this um, thing. And what it's going to be is a Dragon Ball Z theme park, big giant theme park that's that's like a city-sized Dragon Ball Z land in Saudi Arabia yeah, with a whole bunch of digital components that are that are part of it too. I saw an article they were talking about it being like the Disneyland or Disney World of you know, yeah that region. And, so and it's supposed to be super big. It's like the things that they had there, these interesting portal things. You're gonna they're gonna be these in the park, and you're gonna be able to like walk up to them and interact with them with like a digital band or whatever the, that kind of stuff. They're at the show. So be before the show, there were internet keyboard warriors saying oh they, you know this is, we're gonna protest this this is you better have a lot of security this yep. is bad bad thing 
there at the show? Nothing. 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 So, <laughs> and there were not, people lined up. Not that for it was it, justified. But yeah. And mostly people just ignored it. Yep. Um, the people that wished it wasn't there, you know, just could ignore it. And it, it wasn't really. I mean, it was cool looking, but that's it. There was nothing there yeah. anyway. It was it was a fancy booth, but yeah, there was nothing. I didn't even. I mean, I, I walked by it. That was it. So. I heard that they were stopping people from recording their booth. So. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. From the outside, I, you I could, know. but like when you got in, but yeah, but but why? There was like uh, nothing there. Yeah. So I mm. I don't know either. Maybe they didn't want to like record the employees that were working there, in case they were going to get some backlash. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. The other couple big booths. So Final Fantasy. Um, did you guys mess around in the Final Fantasy booth? That was probably the biggest. Um, the Tiki Bar. Yeah, they had the Tiki Bar. They had a bunch of PCs set up. They had the new player experience, which is a bunch of PCs where you they showed you a couple classes. You got to pick one. They had you hammer on a training dummy for a little bit, and then you got you like into a little um, combat arena, and you got to like meet some of the NPCs. Um, which was cool, clever, good, good, good way to to set it up and get people to get introduced to the game. Um, and then I don't know if you guys saw this on the other side. I think my video is actually kind of blurry, but I'll show here here in a second. They had the battle challenge. Did you guys see the battle challenge? No. So the battle challenge, even... you would go together. You would get with four other people. You could like just get with four random people, or you could come with a group. And it was basically a, a boss fight. And it was a super hard boss fight uh, for some uh, one of the bosses that's coming in Dawn Trail, the, the new expansion that's coming in the summer. And if you finish the boss fight, if you killed the boss, they would give everybody, all four of you, a t-shirt. Aww. So it, and yeah, people were excited cool. to try it, but nobody, like barely anybody was was getting it done, um, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Um, so they've been at PAX before. Because I want to say in 2018... They had, they were there. I think it was 2018, but uh, and I was, that was the first year I was enforcing, and they were giving out these, these foam swords, for whatever oh. expansion it was, and I, I got one, <laughs> and I took a sharpie, and because they looked like lightsabers almost, and I scratched out Final Fantasy, and I wrote Swotor.com on it, <laughs> and I was using that to like to direct traffic and everything, oh, so. Yeah, I, Stop, that's incredible. That's I, so I still funny. have pictures of that. I need to find it. I need to find it. But yeah, yeah. so it was a cool booth. They, I, I liked all the plants they had, the tiki bar look and everything. That was yeah. That was I, I have a. I put a picture. Look at look on my Twitter feed. You can see the picture of me at the tiki bar. You get yep. to like walk and and stand in there. And then they had a Koopo that was walking around in a big costume. You could take a picture with. Um, Is that what well. that was? Yeah, the little white uh, ma marshmallow looking thing. Okay. That's that's a coupo. They bring your mail in game. So I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I was admiring stuff from afar most of the time. I didn't do a lot of demos, maybe one or two, and it was mostly because like there was very few booths that had hand sanitizer present, and they were not wiping down their hardware after yeah. each demo. So I was kind of like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I don't even like going bowling, really. Like that's that's the yeah. degree of like. Uh... The, <laughs> so the tiki like, bar did have cool. hand sanitizer, so that's 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 a good one. But yeah, no, I br I brought um, <laughs> and you know I just like washed my hands quite a bit while I was there. Um, I did too. My hands are are cracked. Like I have eczema, <laughs> and um, so it's just like it's flaring up right now. So I have to continually moisturize. But I was like scrubbing my hands every single time. Yeah, um, it, it, yeah, I I didn't play anything. I didn't do anything, any any demos or anything like that. But if it makes you feel better, the PC area does wipe down all the PCs after everybody uses them. So let's go. That's good. <laughs> uh, I have a list here of some other highlights. We'll hear your guys' highlights too. But um, there's a bunch of things that I played, uh, either things I played or just things I I saw. Uh, there weren't very many survival games. I'm always on the lookout for the survival games. Um, I did play this one game, which I had seen before uh, on the web and was sort of like on a, on a list of a watch list of stuff I was looking for. It's called Winter Survivor. Winter Survival? Yeah, Winter Survival. 
uh, you get dropped into the, you know, winter and it's more set up that like you're a, a normal person that just got like stranded out in, a, the, you know, like in the Arctic or, or something and you just got to survive. So if you like find some stuff, you've got some of your stuff, but it's not like, it's not sci-fi. There's no zombies. There's none of that. It's a little more raw and real. And then like the wolves. So, <laughs> so I, I played it. It was pretty good. Um, you know, picking up sticks and I made a torch and I went into the, I found some, some things to eat or whatever. And then there, the, the wolves come and the wolves are, I don't know why that deer is glowing. I didn't see anything like that, but the wolves come and I had a pointy stick, but the wolf uh, the, oh. ignored my pointy stick. And that's and the one you were telling me about. That's <laughs> yeah. Right. It <laughs> ignored your toothpick. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if I, I, cause I, I actually came home and I looked up on the web. I'm like, can you fight the wolves? Are you just supposed to run away? I mean, I think the point is, especially early on, you're supposed to run away. Um, but it's not like a fighting game, certainly because I died. Well, that guy, he, he killed that guy with one hit. Well, that, the, that, like there's a the big wolf. bear. You could, oh, you, yeah, the... you sort of, yeah, like three bites and the, and the wolf killed me. And then it, you know, it's a first person view game. And then Does it, your like, sanity drain. Uh, there is a, there is a sanity meter a little bit when you're in the dark where you get more and more okay. afraid, but I don't yeah. know what it did. Um, it's not like you go in, I don't know. I don't know what it, what it does. Anyway, a little, a little rough, a little raw, but looks interesting. If you want sort of like that, I'm, you know, my plane crashed and I'm, I'm stranded in the wilderness, well, winter wilderness type of, type of thing. Looked interesting. It says it's out now too. It came out on the 6th. Yeah, so that was that was one. That was the only survival one that I that I highlighted. Um, there were a couple other survival likes. A uh, couple booths I saw. I don't know if you guys saw these. Uh, I highlighted two booths that I wanted to do a shout out on. One was like a little kids booth. My video unfortunately is not too great on this one. So Noveline, Noveline, Noveline is a book series. It's a kid, children's books. Um, and she's a little girl, and this is like Piccadilly and the Jolly Raindrops, and and there's like two companion apps, like little mobile apps, I guess. There's like a little puzzle app and a little museum something, find the whatever kind of app. So, th but they had the, just the cutest booth with like everything was put together. It's some stuff that like if you want to engage kids. Um, I don't think it was the perfect booth design, but all the little effects, uh, like the little cutouts that they had and the stuffed animals and the books out, um, that's that I, I thought they did some of the best design for like engaging kids on this one. Um, a better they were selling those toys. Yeah. The it was like 10, it was early, only 10 bucks for I've the seen little people walking around with them. Drops. Oh man. I wanted one so bad, but uh, yeah, I was they pretty were... sure that I would get distracted all weekend. <laughs> they the other the other one who always has a good booth design is um uh white thorn games uh again crappy video but white thorn is a cozy game publisher but their games because they're cozy games a lot of kids like to play them too they they're like down low to the ground and there's like a little tree stump stool that you can sit on and the the yes. car there's a big white carpet um sometimes the booth is a lot bigger than this sometimes it's a little bit smaller um, this gets like everybody in there and hands on and engaged in the game. You'll see like little kids like spending a bunch of time in there. Um, that's I and think they, that's a good way to handle it. Both and kids. they have it low so that the kids, you know, right? It's it's like it's designed for the kids, which it's is approachable. Good. Yeah. yeah. So so I thought that those are two good ones. Um, publisher. So there was a, a new publisher that I saw and I met and I talked to to some of the people there. Midwest Games, so oh. you can tell why this uh, yeah. interested me. Um, small <laughs> publisher, they're just getting started. They're based out of Minneapolis, um, but they've got a uh, little couple little studios, like one in Indianapolis, like another one in Minnesota, an another one like in Arizona. So they're not just limited to only uh, studios that are based in the Midwest. They're only publishing. They don't have a development arm of them of their own. Um, one of their games, uh, which one? The Ra Ra Boom is a women uh, uh, women devs, women owned studios out of Cincinnati. Um, so they're doing some fun things. But Midwest Studio, I thought that was that was fun. So that was my highlight for publishers. They got my shout out for uh, a publisher to watch out of Ra Ra Boom. Yeah, it's a four player beat 'em up 
following ninja cheerleaders from yeah, ninja, outer space. Yeah, ninja cheerleaders from outer space. space. That's awesome. Oh. <laughs> that was the music. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it looks like it's like a art, look, arcade kind of four player. That artwork up. is awesome. Yeah. That's um, like the old Capcom games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, so very cool. I thought that one was good. Uh, they had their PAX Rising area on the show floor. So PAX Rising, they'll grab some indie games that maybe don't even have a publisher. You know, maybe it's just a, a dev or two. And they'll take like 10 of them or so. And they, they give them a little area, like a little kiosk for each one of them uh, and, and block that off. Did you guys go over there at all? Did you did you see any of those? Because I saw one that I was I was really interested in, in, but there's always good ones there. I I walked through it, but like I said, I don't I don't play a lot of the games, and I'm bad about it because I don't want to stand there for hours, <laughs> listen, to, <laughs> listen to them talk. Like I'll listen to them telling somebody else about their game, but yeah, I just want to see it. You know, and they're so cool like with that. Good. You know, yeah. they'll do their pitch because that's what they're there for, but they'll also just, yeah. like, let you, you know, just let you play it. That one looks buildy. Yes. Buildy, it's kind of kind of like City Builder, but your city. So this is the one I, I, I liked that I caught my eye. Uh, what was it called? Um, Airborne Empire. Airborne Empire. Uh, and I think it's in early access or soon, or demos are out there somewhere. You could probably look it up. You've got, like, a dirigible floating city thing that you start out with that's small and then you like add uh, manufacturing capabilities to it and you're like snapping things onto it and you have to worry about how uh, it's buoyancy so you have, need to be balancing that and then as you're flying over the different parts of the terrain you can be gathering resources um, you do need to set up defenses on your floating city because you'll have little pirates that'll come and try to shoot your shoot you down. So you get little turrets for like tower defense. Um, pretty cool looking, pretty cool artwork. Early access 2024 is what it says. Wish list on Steam. Um, but that was a good one. That was that was one I I saw in the Pax Rising. I, yeah, it was I like at least one style. or two. Yeah. 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 Sort of that low low poly and and low. It's a little bit lower contrast, uh, I think, ends up working really well for this kind of game. Um, so that was cool. Speaking of artwork, so this was my highlight for for artwork. Uh, this game, No Love Lost. We talked about this last year in our roundup. No Love Lost was on my highlights for PAX East last year because of its artwork in particular. And they changed the artwork. And the artwork is still really good. Um, but I did talk to them a little bit and, about it. So what their artwork was last year was cell shading. And it, so it was very, uh, what's the, the, the famous? Yeah, Borderlands. It was very kind of Borderlands-ish. Uh, I like cell shading. I ex I've experimented with cell shading in Unreal. And it, it can look really good. I like that style. They were all cell shaded. And I thought it looked great. And I... I thought that was a really good style for them to, to go with this kind of game. They ended up stepping away from it. Um, but this game is, I think it's either released or almost released. It's a 4v4 four, four four team shooter extractor game uh, that ends up looking pretty cool. You're like flying around on these hoverboards. You're grabbing resources and weapon, picking up the weapons and smacking each other and getting to the extraction point at the end and um, fighting the other team along the way. Um, pretty pretty cool. Uh, they had a bunch of people at the booth, eight PCs set up, so the, the whole show, people were getting into groups and, and playing it. Um, but yeah, the art update was something that fascinated me when I went past this one. And you said you talked to them, but did you talk to them about the art update? or? Yeah, yeah. So I talked to one of the artists, actually. And and they say why? Yeah. Yes. So when you're doing cell shading, it's all post. It's typically most of it is post processing. That's the easiest way to do it. So what you're doing is the game engine itself is putting like the outlines and flattening the the textures on everything after the fact. So like the scene gets rendered, 
and then the outlines all get sort of like drawn over the top of, of everything when it when it's done. The problem with that is you can get some artifacting. So you can get some mm. some of those outlines that might bleed when the characters are moving around. Some of the textures might not look good in different kinds of lighting. So and it's they, higher, more hands-on to fix things and stuff. Yes, yes. So to, to try to fix those issues was too much for them. Uh, they they got themselves into situations they wanted to have like day night cycle. Well, if you have a day night cycle and you have dynamic mm -hmm, lighting, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, well mm -hmm. then the, the textures are freaking right. out right. you know at a different time of the, the day. The shading will yeah. be in the wrong spots. Right. Yeah. Um and when I did my uh cell shading, in fact the mouse eats cheese game that I was talking about in the chat <laughs> earlier. <laughs> mouse eats cheese has cell shading on the mouse droid. Uh it's it it's actually got cell it's a, a cell shaded uh, experiment, but you could see a little bleed of the black outlines as well in certain situations, which I didn't like, and it would have been too hard to, to fix. Borderlands does it really well because they do a lot of extra work outside of the post-processing to make everything flow and work, work together really well, but that's a ton of work. All right, another shout out. <laughs> Corley, your favorite studio of PAX. <laughs> My favorite studio. Explain to me what is Evil Tortilla Games? What is going on here? <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, we talked about it last year. And yeah, it's we just, did. And they had more stuff this year. That's why we're just, talking about it again. It's funny because I mean, these guys—they just—they beer—they build the weirdest stuff. It yeah. seems, and it—it's it, just if they're making money, I mean, it's it, it's it's great. Because, I mean, yeah, they, so their other game they had was Who's Your Daddy? But I guess they, now they have Who's Your Daddy Universe? Or what, what was it? Um, yeah. yeah. And then Escape the Simulation yeah. was, was the other one. Babyverse yeah. is baby what verse, it is. <laughs> Babyverse is one. Yeah. Uh, where it's, well, that's like Baby versus Baby. Thing. No, it's not Versus. It's Babyverse. It's it's yeah. like their their world maybe it is versus i guess yeah no but it so, is a, it is a four player combat <laughs> yeah the baby versus baby where you're you basically ride a daddy uh, you're like it's like almost like remy from ratatouille where you're controlling yeah. the daddy where he's going and stuff and <laughs> yeah, so, and you're throwing stuff and you're trying to and it, when you kill the daddy or you knock the daddy out or whatever then the baby's running around on the ground throwing stuff it's like yeah. What Who the comes heck up? am I watching? Okay, so what you're watching is the original game. <laughs> this the original is, yeah, this game is, is, is two-player PvP Who kind puts of. Babies in a microwave. <laughs> well, one no, person well, plays the baby, and one and they person try to do that. Yeah, and so the job of the dad <laughs> is the to heck? keep the baby from killing itself. The job of the baby is to like go and kill itself. So the babies <laughs> found the microwave. And the person who's controlling the baby is like going to like put itself in the microwave. <laughs> so the dads are like trying to like clean up like anything that's dangerous and like grab the yep. baby before it like puts itself in the garbage disposal or whatever the hell's <laughs> going on. It's, it's, so you can see like things are on fire. The baby's crawling in the washing machine and drowning Perfect. itself. <laughs> uh, so that, oh that was last God. year's and that's still but, around. Yeah. Um, Do they have the new one on there? Uh, I don't. Let me see if they. I they. I don't think they had the new uh, video for the for the new one. But maybe they've got it on on YouTube. I can try to to look it up there too. Um, because they had two new ones. They had that one baby versus baby. So it's a bunch of babies trying to kill each other, but using yeah. a dad as like a vehicle and like picking up stuff off the ground. And they have a roadmap <laughs> <laughs> of, Another... of what they're doing. Baby Daddy Academy. Because <laughs> I mean, you know, it's serious stuff. Man, these uh, guys. Uh, I like the charred baby. The the other one yeah. that they added, uh, <laughs> that they brought, was this simulation. So they put you basically in this volcanic world where everything's mostly lava, but it's a um, it's a kind of a cool puzzle game where one person is the baby and one person's the dad, and the baby can go in some places. Like there's a little tunnel. And the baby can crawl in there and press a button in there that like br brings another rock out of the lava. And then the dad can jump over to that rock and and bring you know grab the baby and like jump to the rock because the baby can't jump that far. And a couple of situations, I saw like the dad can like pick the baby up by its leg 
and like huck it across the lava so the baby can go to some other place to press another button. Um, there was like an interesting puzzle game, but then, you know, they two pe this, so that's two player co-op trying to get through the simulation and then you kept dying and it would go to like a simulation ended dad died to lava baby died to falling damage, whatever it would, it would say over and over. So yeah, that was my highlight for weird games. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like how realistic the dog is, and yet the baby and the daddy are just these like, <laughs> I don't know what they horrifically. Do. I think they're like taking a whole bunch of shortcuts and just putting a game out there. And why not? So right. that's what they did. Uh, exactly. And, and that's right that's because what when you is. have a date, when you have an idea like that, you it's a, it's wise not to spend a lot of time on it. It's, I mean, the the animation is bad, the textures are bad, but it's. Gets compelling. But, but here we are yeah. talking about it. So. Yep. Yep. It's an ugly, uh, ugly. We're not only hilarious. here talking about it, we're here talking about it again. Yeah. again. <laughs> okay. Here's another one that was on the weird side um, that I was fascinated by <laughs> Chicken Police. So this is like a noir detective game. Where you play two chicken policemen, like the, like in the nineteen six nineteen fifties nineteen forties chicken police noir detective story, and you have to like solve the crime. And there's a lot of like dialogue, and you got to find like the stuff and a little bit of combat. And uh, so just listen here, listen listen to these these guys in the beginning. I think I'm gonna have to un unmute the the whole tab. Hold on. Um, Again, just another thing that was like super compelling and just made me stare at it for a long time. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting yeah, that's... too. So, are you ready? Well, well. If it isn't the chicken police in the flesh. The hands that lay the golden eggs, huh? Okay, so what exactly are we talking about right now? <laughs> so it's all the noir oh, I like stuff. That. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. We're the chicken police. Yeah, so if it isn't the chicken police here in the flesh, <laughs> it's like, yeah, see, you'll never get me, chicken. <laughs> I don't know what is going on here, but they're That's like pretty cool. I like photorealistic chicken roosters driving a you know like a 1950s Chevy, oh, running around. A, there is a free demo out there. <laughs> there you go. Go go play. Go play the demo. Of chicken police on the weird end too. Chicken police into the hive is coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> into the hive. Yep. <laughs> um, one other game that was a highlight too. Uh, did you did you get to go see this game, Corley? The the uh, real time strategy game, the RTS. Oh, we, no, we, I looked we, at we it briefly. Oh, need it. I, I looked at it briefly. I got that pamphlet. I was gonna look at it later, but yeah. Small studio, originally based out of Australia, but they've got a couple people around the world. Real little studio. They only have like a half a dozen people um, working together on this. Real-time strategy. Uh, they were very excited about it. They were like all there. And uh, I was in early on Thursday. I got in a little bit early before the, before everyone else oh, that's, got in. That's right. You said it was on the uh, outside of a Dyson Sphere. That's right. We were looking at it. That's yeah. Right. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's it's a Dyson sphere, but you're on the outside of the Dyson sphere. Yeah. And when you're battling, some one of the strategies is to blow up chunks of the ground and you'll blast down through. They'll show here in a second. You'll you could sort of like see the sun and coming from the center of the Dyson sphere as you started blowing out pieces of the train. So then your enemies need to go around like if you're playing versus other players. They'll need to like re do their strategy or repair the ground or make a bridge or whatever. Um, there's weather generators. And if you knock it out, then the ground all freezes and then you can drive across the water. So th they're doing some interesting things. They're building it all in unity. They were very excited. They were very cool. Uh, so I just wanted to give it a shout out. I like, I like RTS games once in a yeah, while. And you, and you have it here that it's, it's like Supreme commander, which I mean, it's exactly that in total annihilation, which was the predecessor to, to uh, Supreme Commander, yeah, that's exactly what it it gives me. Uh, yeah, it reminds me of. Yeah, yeah, Home Homeworld Homeworld Three, which is that's which is 
even more interesting, that's coming out soon. That's RTS in 3D space. I think that's a really even more advanced version. Well, don't um, hear me talking about Homeworld. So. Yeah, we'll talk about Homeworld when it when it launches for sure. Uh, yeah, my collector's edition for that should be coming in Sweet. the next couple of months. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then that brings us to a game which I know all of us uh, are familiar with and spent time on. Um, Jackie, did you go visit the Larian booth by chance? Uh, several times, Max. <laughs> <laughs> several times. And well, why, because, um, why did you do that? Um, well, for one thing, it was very strategically placed um, because it was one of the first booths that you see um, once you're coming down the escalators and entering the expo hall. Um, but I did see that there was uh, cosplayers that were... Um, present and i'm like well i mean i got time i have four days so (laughs) so i i decided to um oh my gosh it's emrys emrys gaming hi i have i have i have a story about them too um but yeah no i i i saw that there were um cosplayers there And, and also i have mutuals as as well that i wanted to say hi to to see if they were at the at the booth but no they had a starion they had lazelle they had shadowheart um, they had a Mind Flayer at one point, and um, Carlac, and all of them. They're they're lovely human beings, uh, in yeah. general. I got to meet them as well. Um, so Yuki Ingram on IG is uh, Lazel, uh, Justice Vancho's uh, who cosplayed Astarian, um, Illusion Alchemy on IG is who was playing the Mind Flayer, but the actual Mind Flayer cosplay was built by uh, Kelton CFX. Um, Autumn Ivy was Carlac. Um, oh my gosh, she was so cute. She was so cute. So she, she showed up on so Sunday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday. and I was like, oh my god, I saw my wife. And so I, I hopped in, <laughs> I hopped in in line, and I just walked up to them, and I was like, hey, could you protect me from the mind flare? And she's like, yeah. And she grabs my hand, and um she's like shoving me behind her and she's like putting me between um she's putting herself in between me and the mind flare um so she was oh there's a lot of rain coming down if i lose power my bad <laughs> blame right. blame austin bring um, back yeah and uh man manzi ray was cosplaying shadow heart and they are just lovely lovely beans um i would highly suggest following them they're all they're all awesome but yes I I had I had to like I yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. I, I had to. There's no way I, I couldn't say hi to them. The cosplayers who did Astarian and Lazelle, they've been there the last two years, um, I believe, and I think mm-hmm. they even went to Pax West. Um, and they're they've been, they're amazing. Um, the addition of Shadowheart. Uh, oh, the mine uh, the mind flare was around at Pax West also, but the Carlac and Shadowheart. Where this is the first time I saw them. And yeah, they did. They did great too. The Car Carlac in particular, she just played into it. She, you know, she like had the mm-hmm. mannerisms and the you know you, you'll see she like do the you know facial facial expressions and you know be all gung ho on it, doing doing a really good job. I, I think I tweeted this out at one point. There was about five or six Shadow Hearts in line. Oh yeah. To to get their picture oh, taken. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the cosplayers yes. with Shadow Hearts. Yes. Even Lazelle, look at Lazelle's always doing like the serious mean face. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, they all. Oh, she was all, owning yeah, it <laughs> good job for and, sure. Um, so yeah, that that was a highlight. Uh, Larian's booth was this this similar booth that they've had in previous years. You could go in there and you could play Baldur's Gate. They had the Baldur's Gate. Bo- it was a board game or tale t- tabletop. Um, there was there's some of that going on over on the side. Um, but yeah, it's fun fun to see them still there. They're they they've been a staple of PAX the the few uh, years as well. Yeah, this this first crowd shot I had out here, you could see in line there was like um an there's like an Asterian and a Shadowheart, uh, you know, a bunch of bunch of people waiting in line. Um all the all the cosplayers waiting to get their picture taken by yeah. the cosplayers. So yeah, yeah I hope Larian's La- awesome. taking care of them because they were working hard mm-hmm. too. Um, all day, every day, <laughs> they, were, they were hanging out there, um, doing a doing a great job. And as I said, Asterian and Lazelle, they've been doing it for years now. Um, I was actually kind of surprised that they that Larian was there since they'd already released the game. And yeah, same. You know, yeah. That, that's the same. 
I mean, but, it's a nice booth. It's the same thing that they've had the last, you know, three times. I think the 2020 was the first year they were there. With, with especially since they announced that they're not working on Baldur's mm-hmm. Gate. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that, that was the other thing, yeah. Yeah, so. Giving yeah, back to the community. Something yeah. something new is coming. They're going to be working on something else, something new. Um, it wasn't, they're not getting kicked out. It wasn't Wizards of the Coast kicking them off. It wasn't the, that news. Nothing, the rumors yeah. have been floating around, but no, it's, they've got other things that they want to go off and do, which is cool. We'll see what they do. They were, they've been doing great things for years now. So can I, can I talk about like a cute little moment that yeah. Emrys Gaming is just like, speaking of community. So, um, Mills and I were walking around doing some, some shopping because I think it was Sunday. I don't know what is time anymore? But uh, <laughs> I just see a very tall person come up to me. He's like, "That's time for me to leave. A very tall person is like, Jackie? And I was like, hi. <laughs> and, and, and they said, oh, I'm, I'm Emrys Gaming. And I'm like, oh, holy crap. Are you kidding? And um, I, I had, Emrys, I, I had... Um, hopped in to your stream probably about a year, a year and a half ago now, and um, it was a, it was just really cool vibes, like the energy, and um, you know I gave a, a I think it was a, a opal mount, opal voltilla mount, and it was like hey, you know it's just like we really like the vibes here, so so here you go, and then lo and behold, <laughs> this. Um, real person is like we're meeting up at at a show and it's like hey you know could we could we you know have a photo can we talk a little bit and then um i was a small kid you're no longer a small kid my goodness i was just (laughs) like hello (laughs) um but yeah and and i told people i was posting all over twitter but i was like if you if you see me on the floor please stop me and say hi and i was giving people um pins uh, sword tour pins and and so yeah no that was that was really cool I'm I'm so happy that I'm looking over here because that's where our chat is but I'm so happy that you you stopped me and and you said hi because that those are the moments that really make me feel um, yeah that give me the most reward for being you know in community and and everything so that was that was a really special moment for me so thank you for doing that and that's as you said you sort of introduced this at, at the beginning that's that's really why you go to these kinds of things is mm-hmm. yeah you could see some demos but you, you could go on steam and play demos all day uh, all these things are on yeah. on steam and they've got early access and demos you go there to see people um yeah. and there was i so mean we hung out yeah you, you yeah we did, you we a, did. It was first time meeting you in in real life in person uh, meeting yeah. me in real life we had like a little um a little bit of a, a meetup i got to see cats um, There's a couple pictures uh intasar was there cat plays was yeah, there intasar. There's Corley Mills. Oh, there's there's you and me getting our picture taken. <laughs> there's our there's there was like a little side Swotor group meetup that we had. Um, yeah, with the Omni. I mean, we went we went out even, to dinner. Yeah, that was that was good times. We had dinner. Cats had a a panel that I went to. It on was Sunday. About, um, yeah, yeah. Women women in gaming and building online communities. So you know, we were in the front row and like supporting her and everything. And she's like, "Yeah, I do. I stream tour tour." And I was like, "Whoa!" <laughs> she's like, "Thanks, Jackie." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unfortunately, I missed that panel. I wanted to go, but I was busy. So. All right. It was good. it was fun. It was a good time. All right, there was I, I missed one game I, I wanted to do before we talk about Dune, which we'll talk about in a second too. There was one other game. I don't know if you guys saw this. I just thought it was fascinating because there's not a lot of I find, and maybe it's because it's indie and it's people, you know, building some small games. There's not a lot of innovation uh with with indie. And I would expect to see more. Like AI. AI is it's being really getting really interesting. You could have NPCs that you could like maybe chat with, you know, backed by ChatGPT. Nobody's even like experimenting. But you do get experiments every once in a while, and this game was one example of that. This game basically it's a very small studio, nocturnal. They they just basically had a a TV set up and a controller and a PC and nothing else. And that's it. They didn't even bring any signage or anything. Um, what they have though is Vampire Survivors, which is a pixel-based, just shoot constantly kind of game, 
basically it's a first person shooter version of Vampire Survivors. Um, so a little bit of innovation in game design. You get little upgrades and unlocks as you sort of kill more and more and more of these zombies. Basically, the developer was just running the, running the demo. He would start a session, and he would pick, when he started it, how many thousands of zombies would spawn into this valley that you're in. Um, and he'd start with, like, he'd give you 5,000. And if you if you got through 5,000, he'd start it again with 10,000 for you. Um, so a little bit of game innovation there. It's one to watch. Um, it's, a little, little, it's definitely early. I don't even know if they... I tried to even look them up. I couldn't even find a, a verge, video version of this on the web yet. Or you try to look up Nocturne Games, and <laughs> there's not much out there. So we're going to have to keep our eyes out. Uh, they said they even had a second game that they're working on that they were going to show Sunday, which I wasn't able to see. But fun stuff. You get Every once in a while, you get something fun like that. Um, also fun... I don't have much video of this, but we can definitely play the trailer. I do have a little bit of the cosplay video. Corley, what did you and I get to do there on so, so we, Sunday? So we, we got to go watch a little presentation on, on Dune Awakened, I believe is what it's called. Awakening, uh, yeah. Awakening, that's what it was, yeah. Yep. Um, and it's aptly named because you crash on Dune for some reason. They They... There is a story in it, and they are trying to keep the story very under wraps. But, uh, yeah, it's basically you're a survival game on Arrakis, or Dune. Um, and the, they had a cosplayer there that was, in a, that was a Fremen. They're definitely using the visual aspects or visual style of the new movies. Yeah, which is which is cool. I mean, in you fact, can't they're doing it that, in conjunction that's... with the movie studio and even getting some of the assets from them and yeah, coaching right. on how to do some of that. Yeah, um, so, which is pretty interesting. It it looks interesting. Yeah, uh, I'm consciously optimistic. I guess you could say. Right. Um, I don't. It seems like they're putting a lot of stuff in there. You know, because they have. You start out uh, obviously. It's, like any game, they start out with a tutorial kind of where you, you crash and then you're going through stuff to figure out how to do stuff in the game. And I just, I don't, there's putting so much stuff into this game. It, it, they were talking about putting so much stuff into this game. Like you have, you know, the initial area you're in is no PvP. And then you like get to another area where you can build a base. But then there's community hubs. I think kind of like Destiny 2. Yeah. Where you have, you know, the, that stuff uh, where you'll see other people. They're going to have servers, but they don't know how many people are going to be on a server. They don't know if you're going to be locked in a server. It's all still early. Um, yeah. This is what's showing on the stream right now, even though we're delayed a little bit, but um, is a small worm that shows up. Yeah, two um, sizes of sandworms. Yeah. And then, then you have the PvP, the deep desert area is the PvP area that's solely PvP. You know, people, they, yep. they try, so somebody asked, you know, well, what happens if you get killed in PvP? Do you lose all your stuff? And initially said they said no, and then they're like, well, yeah, if you get killed in a PvP area, everybody can steal your stuff. But they can't, so I'm like, well, then that's, you know, they tried to make it sound like the PvP wasn't as... Punishing horrible or it's is, punishing is yeah. or it isn't. It's so we'll see. But yeah, so they've got some things to work out there. We we're going to talk about this a lot. Oh, because it's not going to be out in yeah. 2024 even. So this we're yeah. going to talk about this. I'm sure as when it gets into betas and early access. But we did get that behind the scenes. It was under embargo. We were under NDA until they didn't make us sign anything, but they just asked us to be under no. embargo until yeah. today. Um, so. Little bit more information than we had in the past. The couple things were the questions that we asked during that session that I thought was interesting, which is what Corley just started getting into, which is what, yeah, what, what's up with the PvP? That three server model, I think, is interesting. One is the PvE area where you're like building your main base and doing some resource gathering and a bunch of that kind of stuff. The social hub area, then, which is like a city where you can do like trading and meet up with other players. And then the deep desert area, which will also be procedurally generated and dynamic and wiping uh, yeah, every once a week. week. Yeah, right. because and which is good because they use an inverse in-universe kind of 
concept and mechanic, basically because the storms on Dune, you know, they can yep. strip the flesh off of beings or destroy metal, and that's what resets the area. So nobody yep. can build a big base out there and basically control the whole thing. That's cool yep. in concept as long as it works. Yeah, you know, so so it it, it looks I'm... nice. I'm I'm definitely gonna try it, but. Yeah, I'm I'm super excited about uh the the first half, which is like the building and the survival and you could do you you put down a totem and then you've got like an area of property and you can build whatever you want to build on there. And there's an architecture system where you can sort of like build the framework and other people can like fill it in and you can sort of do all work together. There's vehicles. Yeah. You can like the whole selling blueprints and Yeah, and like then you blueprint what you build. Yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah. Um, but vehicles. I don't think they're blueprints. I think they're you. You like you build it and then you package it up and then you can sell that to people. It sounded which... it sounded like a blueprinting system where you're selling the design and then they could they but, instantiate the yeah. design and they've got to add resources to it to to pop it out. Um, vehicles, small ones, big ones that you like might have a group that's that's building the uh, the big vehicle like a spice harvester. Um, you got that's... like a ornithopter that can pick up a spice harvester and you got to like drop it in the sand and then before the worm gets you. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. If if it's just like that kind of co-op stuff will be interesting. If there's too much locked behind the PVP and the PVP areas, they're trying to say and we ask this question and this is where they're trying to clarify a little bit. They're they're trying to say, "Oh, well even in the deep desert in that PVP area, there'll be, you know, solo people could like go out there and do exploration and sell maps because it won't be explored and you know, there'll be going to be this mapping system and there's going to be plenty for solo people to do too or small guilds and uh press x we'll to see. doubt for me on, on that yeah, one we'll, we'll see about yeah we'll, that. we'll see how that works typically that way that works in pvp survival games is if you get into a, a server you might have a server where things are a little bit more balanced but oftentimes there'll be like a big tribe or a big clan or whatever and there's this is not this is not Dune from the movies. This seems like it's an alternate universe Dune. so there's you could you can have harkonnen faction or uh a, a Atreides faction, and you're you're not yep. Paul, but you're like a house within those factions. So there's like faction warfare. But if you got like a big guild who's locking everything down, and you got no opportunity to to get any of the good resources, and it's all locked behind PvP, and it's a big you know stress fest, and leet sweaty dudes are locking down all the points of interest and interesting content. Yeah. Well, then it's not a game for me. Yeah, um, but it, we'll but it, we'll see. see. Yeah, so we'll see. We're as I said, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. We'll get Coralie on. We're gonna talk about this over the course of the next year. Um, yeah. I'm I'm sure we'll be talking a ton about it. <laughs> if, if they let us run our own servers, like they said they were looking at, yeah, I, I think it'll be definitely. I think it would be better. Although it's we'll it's see. gonna be hard. I bet they're not. It's definitely not at launch. Yeah, I, I, I doubt they will. The interaction they between a private server and what. I mean, that opens up exploitation and hacking if the private server then connects to a big public well, open PvP yeah, area. Yeah, it's not going to connect to that. It's going to be a standalone thing. Well, then, I yeah, if it's all standalone and you can take both the deep desert yeah. out, um, but then you lose then the social hub, but that's a, but maybe that's okay. I would, I would, and we've I mean, done that. Like, we do that in Rust. We do that in Arc. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll do that. All right. So we'll keep you updated on that as that goes forward. Um, but yeah, that was, I definitely, if you have any questions on that and what we heard in that session behind the scenes session, uh, even a little bit beyond like how some of the builds work and how some of the building system works and how you can change skills, go in our discord and, and ask Coralie and I in there and we'll give you a little bit more information. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about it more in the next, uh, in the next year. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so that's PAX. Anything else that you guys want to wrap up with? Um, did yeah? Did you play any any? What did you play on the plane? <laughs> what did, what did you, I played no man. I Man's slept. Cup on did you? <laughs> what I slept are you plane. talking about? I always sleep games. on planes. I passed out. I oh I def goodness. I sleep on every plane ride. Um, yeah, back in the day, I did a Chicago to Seattle four hour flight and slept from takeoff to landing. And that's like time travel if you can do that, because then you like I could, yeah, <laughs> I could not sleep because I was driving. So oh, that's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I played, I played No Man's Sky. 
because uh, it works really well on the Steam Deck. It was easy. It was low, you know, low brain power. So I played No Man's Sky. That's that's the only thing I sort of like played on my Steam Deck while I was there at PAX. Um, I brought my Switch, but I didn't touch it once, aside from bringing it out of yeah. my luggage because I was just so busy. Um, I I didn't right. play, you know, a lot of a lot of games, but I was I was there for the people. Like I said earlier, I yeah. wanted to catch up with a bunch of folks and see them, meet new people, of course. Um, so that that took a lot of like my social bar. Like Max, I don't think you understand. Post show. I never talk to anyone for like two to three weeks. So <laughs> I, I the fact that you. I'm here, <laughs> you know, so, um, but yeah, no, my, my, good. my social bar is like completely depleted. Um, That's good. It was, it was a lot of fun. It's full, yeah. it's full up. Gla glass half full. <laughs> no, see for Max it's full up, but for Jackie it's. No, I'm an introvert also. I, I definitely went home and, turned the lights off and sat by myself and was happy. Rocking. <laughs> but I, but I, I, I took I was an doing extra day off too. to take a vacation from my vacation. So. Um, yeah, <laughs> nice. exactly. And I, well, I went home well, on Sunday to too, yeah. so I wasn't there as, as long as you were. So I went home on Sunday mm. and had some quiet time. Um, but I was also, I'd, I kept going back to the hotel. Like I, I was doing my runs in the, in the middle of the day, um, just going and running and sitting by myself and, you know, working out a little bit and, um, having a good time. Weather was terrible, though. I actually had to run inside on the treadmill because it was like 45 and 35 mile an hour wind gusts and rain at two days. So at least, well, it, it was rainy got, on Saturday. But yeah, I got a couple good sunny, runs outside, but only uh, not every day like I usually do. Yeah, I was. What was it? Sun Thursday night. Yeah, I remember because I um, I was walking across the street to meet up with with other folks and. I could lean into the wind, yeah, and it would it would hold me up. I'm like, oh my god, yeah, it was rough. Yeah. That serious this wind, is it terrible. But okay. it was it was worth the journey for sure because I met some very very lovely people. Last couple of minutes, let's go around. Anything else you've been playing? Because there is a, a common thread between all of us. One thing that we've definitely been playing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sima, been playing what else? Quite you been a playing? bit of. Quite a bit of Star Wars: The Old Republic this week, yes, because it is it is a total Galactic War week. So I've been yes. working on that. I am doing my normal amount of stuff, but I have not been amassing points on your scale, Max. I did put down quite a quite a few points. Um, how about you, Carly? You you were in there quite a bit on Tuesday, putting down points. Uh, I did during the day because I had to, I took the day off. Um, yeah, I started up, you know, the new character to try and to get And then towards the end points. of the day, Corley, Corley discovered it was his anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot okay. about that. So in, in my defense, <laughs> my wife forgot too. <laughs> oh, so that defense. <laughs> I'm usually the one that remembers and I remind her. But, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, my mom texted us and said, happy anniversary. And I'm like, it was like seven, eight o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh, crap, that's right. We, oh, that's and my, I was at home. My wife had gone to work. Didn't even say anything because she forgot. Yeah. yeah. So I texted her. I texted my wife. I'm like, since my mom reminded me, uh, happy anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we've been, yeah, it's 18 that's years. So, so it's, it's nice. It's been a while, so. So we we went out to eat. Yeah, we came home, and I didn't go to MFN last night because we were basically planning on what we were going to do for our twentieth. So sweet. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do, where we're going to go, and stuff like that. Because that one we will not forget. So. But you did have Very quite cool. a few points in there for Swotor. So for people that are familiar, Total Galactic yeah. War is it's a big sort of guild challenge, and they open up um, a lot of targets. Usually there's only three targets. So it's guilds going versus each other and you pick one of three planets on a total galactic war week it's all the planets so there's a lot of more opportunity for a small guild to go after a planet which we are going to do this week so then yeah. everybody puts down does extra challenges off yeah. the checklist to get extra points it's fun for us because it's a team effort and we, we yeah uh, do things together and lose, yeah kind of talk about it amongst together. ourselves all week and 
track yeah, of it's, progress it's, and try to fit try to pick the right planet which that decision i never i always leave to someone else because i decide wrong on that every time yeah. yes it, it's that is the only time where we really have a chance of and we're kind of strategic one. in how we do it too yeah and we have to plan out which one we're going to do we keep an eye on what's going on and then in fact we haven't like, picked right. a planet yet um, no we haven't so but usually we're, we're like accumulating points and we're going to jump yeah. into a planet either late tonight or early tomorrow um, yep. But we're going to like pick a planet that doesn't have a big guild on it that's like 10 times our size will blow us right. out of the water. Um, right. So we're a little strategic yeah. that way. So yeah, that's, that is something. As soon as we get out of here, I'll probably log in long enough to figure that out, what we might, you know, look at the points and then. So a, a good number of points is typically guy. like uh, 100k points on a character. You do your, you, that gets your, your conquest objective on that character for the week. Uh, I did... <laughs> Rolled a new character, leveled it up to level 10. You have to invite the character to the guild the, the week before the week starts because you can't do it during the week because there's people, bad people behavior. People were doing shenanigans, sort of. yes. Um, so this character was created last week. Tuesday morning, it was level 10. The character is now level 47. Jeez. And I have 2.1 million conquest points on that one character. <laughs> wow. So. See, I stopped because I want to... Because I didn't want to get too high, because the the five levels is only once a day. Yeah. So, uh, but I've got another character. I guess I've right. got another uh, level ten. But wait in the, the wings. But counter argument <laughs> to that, Corley, is the 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 points for every one level For're just cheaper. go on <laughs> eternally. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you get those, and then you also get the mission points. Yeah. They're doing uh, PvP was, right now, in fact. Yeah. Um, Stask was he, he was they yeah, had that going. Yeah. Over so what about you, Jackie? Any any other games this week, or just quiet time? The the game of mindfulness um, meditation. <laughs> well, oh Lord. Well, obviously, Sortor. Um, we were actually playing PvP not too long ago. Mm. Um, because um, uh, someone said something along the lines of, "I want that deco." I'm like, "Let's get you that deco." <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was that was a lot of fun. Um. So I play Sword Tour. Um, I also play Honkai Star Rail. Um, yeah, I made, I made a look at that. Which is um, a game that I actually did talk about on the panel because it does have like food related items um, that are used in it. Um, that was part of like the world building topic. I do, okay. <laughs> I still haven't finished my first playthrough of Baldur's Gate 3. Um, I'm literally at the last fight, oh, really? like, and I and I and I just know that once I push, once I go, then that's it. It's going to end at some point. Um, even though they have like a, a lovely epilogue and everything, I started another run there you go. <laughs> because I didn't want the first one to end yet. Um, so that's that's on the docket. Um, and then, oh my gosh, uh, on my Switch I have Octopath Traveler two. Oh yeah. That's, yeah, a, that's, so that's a good one. That's a fantastic title. I'm not super duper far into it. Oh my God. So this is a stupid <laughs> whoopsie Jackie moment, but in Octopath Traveler One, I don't know if y'all are familiar with the title, like if you if you if you played it, but if you can imagine this, at no point in my first ninety hours of playing did I ever run into switching classes. So I played the entirety of the game without without uh, or jobs I should say it's it's jobs that they call it. I never I never knew that you could switch your jobs. Well, that's like an achievement in and itself itself. The, the, but everyone was like, "Why are you playing on hard mode?" I'm like, "I didn't know <laughs> because because of the way that it works is like you have to like run into it into the world." And I'm yeah. just kind of like, I see the breadcrumb over there. I'm going over there. So I didn't like really yes. explore. Um, whereas in two, they're like, this is something that you can do. Here's a tutorial. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I got it. I clocked it. I'm good. But yeah, no, the, those are those are the four games that I'm, I'm kind of juggling at the moment. There's a lot. And uh, admittedly, I haven't really played anything since I got home. Uh, I still haven't like really fully slept a whole night yeah so i'm hoping that i can i can get away with that tonight 
Okay, well, hopefully this this discussion brought closure to, to everything that you'll be able to. We can now sleep. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. I'm still trying to make my feel-good, warm fuzzies PAX, post-PAX East thread over on, on, on Twitter. I, I, there are so many memories that I just want to give as many shout-outs as I possibly can. Yeah, I saw all the but, pictures you were posting. <laughs> I'm so bad at making sure to take photos. Because there's going to be a time where I'm going to forget that this stuff happened and I don't want that to happen. So I, I try to document it as much as possible. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's I'm going to need a bigger phone. Right. But <laughs> right. that's, that's a future Jackie problem. <laughs> but it was, yeah. it was so lovely meeting, meeting the both of you. Seema, hopefully one day. Hopefully one day. One day. Yep. That'd that's be cool. What we, that's what we keep saying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, cool. Well, in the next couple of weeks, I'm sure we'll talk about some of the other things that um, we've been playing too. I did, I did play a little bit of Horizon Forbidden West. We'll talk about that. There's, there's a part of that that I really that that they've done so well, which I was talking to our guild about last night, which is they they animate kids some of the best I've ever seen. So I'll talk about that next week, maybe. Um, uh, Better than, than who's your daddy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they Sorry. just do is they do a really good job of like five oh like five God. year old kids they like fidget and they bounce on their toes and you know they, they just do a really good job of it aloy in the first one and in, in zero dawn um the first like uh half hour of the game it's or Weird the first kid. few cut scenes or whatever 20 minutes it's a little little aloy little five-year-old six-year-old aloy and she's so cute and animated so well they just do they do that really well anyway i'll talk about horizon forbidden west no man's sky um, but then we'll see. Oh, and I was playing Starfield again, uh, doing a little bit more of my and new game pluses of Starfield. Um, but we'll definitely give you the this week, wasn't it? Uh, Starfield was yeah. a few things in the spring sale, but we'll definitely do our wrap up of Swotor and talk about Total Galactic War and uh, Lego Fortnite Survival is something else I've been playing. So maybe we'll talk about that next week too. But I think, as you said, as everyone said, it's been a great, this was sort of a good debrief on PAX. Appreciate both of you coming on. This is this has been really cool. Of course. Uh, is, if you want more on the Dune stuff, as I said, jump in our Discord for Coralie and I. Jackie, they should probably just go get you on the socials, right? Uh, yeah, I'm practically geeky fried rice everywhere. Yeah. But I am, I am most active on, on Twitter. Yeah. Um, for sure. I stream every now and then. It's whenever I have energy. I don't have a set schedule. I'm not a pro. I'm not a professional whatsoever. Except when you do the um, Swotor streams, which are amazing. That, oh, I mean, shoot. I got to oh, prepare for the next one. Those things, those things are great. Yeah, the quality is, is, yeah, it is massively improved. Yes, they're fantastic. It's, it's yeah. so funny when I, I, I think I've told the both of you, um, at some point, but I, I remember when I was, um, kind of like taking ownership of the dev streams, uh, initially I was like, oh man, you know, I gotta, I got like really big shoes to fill. Oh my gosh. And I was going through like all the, uh, all the previous <laughs> streams, all the, the previous VODs that I just remember, um, seeing one in particular and I just see a. A, a musco he's just like are we live <laughs> <laughs> right. and i'm like yeah. you know what i'm is, fine i'm fine i'm totally good is, right. is this thing yeah. on? shoes thing not on? so big after all <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're good we're good I'm so good. good yeah but uh, yeah i'm, I'm glad yeah, that you all enjoy them i know they're they're rather large info dumps but we try we try to get as much information now they're well organized and yeah, entertaining, the communication so. yeah, yeah the communication is great because yeah. yeah there's so many you know, for so long we didn't have really a lot of information coming out of the the, the team. Yeah, so but it's great to have doing those things. Out. Those have been really yeah, fill, filling a a good spot and keeping us connected to what's happening. And we can't wait to see what's what's next. Yeah. Oh, um, it, this, this is going to be a big one. So coming up, <laughs> pray for me. <laughs> here we pray go. Here we go. It's you funny. heard it here. It's you awesome. won't need it. You'll it'll be fantastic. Yeah, yeah it, it, it is. And by big, you mean big fan, right? That that you're gonna scare 
Eric with again. <laughs> this time. So funny thing, it's the same fan each time because when you buy a new wooden fan, you kind of have to like continually open and close it to kind of uh, get it going. Yeah, like loosen up like the the the, the hinge in it and everything. So it's like, it's like, oh, I know this one can snap. <laughs> so it's, it's the same fan. It does. You got like you it's got like one of one of two that I, I that I use. My favorite part is you saying. Oh, I forgot I had this with me. <laughs> no, I was trying to like, because I, I had it in my my pocket, in my leggings. I was like, oh, I'm trying to hide this. Because oh, I, I, like... I sit on his left. And so Eric. I had it in my left pocket so that he couldn't see it. <laughs> Eric said, I was told there would be no fan. <laughs> Listen. Oh, I forgot I had this. <laughs> okay, gotta keep you on your toes. Brooks, <laughs> Brooks scolded me. He's the one that um, kind of like produces everything behind the scenes. And uh, he was like, next time, tell me when you're going to do something. <laughs> so that way I don't cut you off the camera. I'm like, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you. Yeah, so yeah, that was, was kind of funny. Corley, you were, you, were, you were saying something like 45 seconds ago. No, that, no so that's sorry. fine. I was like, well, I was just talking about, you know, and it, it, it's amazing. You know, like, like I was talking, going back to info. So many people don't even know the game is still going, which amazes right. me. But, I mean, oh, we're in yeah. it all the time. That's why. So Thursday night, was it Thursday? Yeah, because it was after the Lord of the Rings thing. Um, I went back to get stuff at the merch booth, um, which, yeah, I'm wearing the, the, the PAX, you know, thing. Uh, what was it? The flannel. And uh, I was standing in line for, like, 45 minutes. I was talking to people behind me, and I was evangelizing Swotor left and right. And they're like, we didn't even know the game was still going. And I'm like, oh yeah, we got all this stuff going on. And they were just so. Hopefully, we have a new player. I don't know. We'll see, or a returning yeah. player because they had played before. But I mean, that's just... one thing that kind of a side effect of of Total Galactic War is I typically will start a new character. And hanging out on Tython or Korriban, it's kind of fun to listen to general because there'll be other, there's yeah. always at least one or two people who are like back from like mini year break or brand new. Yep. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God, this game is so awesome. Right. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's uplifting. Yep. All right. Well, we, when we do get that update and there's a dev stream we'll definitely get that on the podcast too and we will be waiting with bated breath with lightsabers ready to ignite uh <laughs> to to jump in on that stuff uh Can't jackie wait. and corley thank you for coming and sharing with yes. us yes you made me thank feel like i was there thank Thanks. you for uh letting me go so much yep um and everyone else thank you for being out there and as always, all the feed and subscribe links for everything are, are on newoverlords.com and our videos on YouTube slash newoverlords. Please come chat with us in our Discord at newoverlords.com slash Discord and get some of that inside info on the Dune game, uh, as well as what we're doing in SWOTOR. And you can also follow us on all of the social networks and we'll keep you up to date there too. And with that, with that, we will talk to you soon. Later, everyone.